What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really excited because it's the 7th of February. And why that's important, even though it feels like just a Monday, it's not. Today the ban list officially becomes effective, which means that from today onwards we are going to be playing with the February 2022 ban list. Now in today's video I wanted to bring you guys some of the best side deck cards that you need to be playing in today's format to be competitively successful. And if you're just having fun with some casual friends, these cards are still very important as well. And if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I do want to say that this format is going to be really, really fun. I know there's going to be a lot of weird rogue decks roaming around. Just because some of the cards that came off the ban list were really, really fun, and I think it makes this format very, very enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoy, and with that, on to the video. Okay, so just before I get into showing you guys what I think are going to be the best side deck cards of today's format and explaining why I think those are going to be the best side deck cards of today's format, I do want to say one thing real quick. And essentially what I want to say is when you're choosing your side deck, you always have to keep in mind two things essentially. One, what's meta? And what's relevant and what are you going to see when you're going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But two, you have to keep in mind if you guys are going to a locals, each person's locals is very different. So what I mean by that is some locals, for example, my locals, likes to play a lot of back row decks. That's just kind of the players that I have around my locals. So my side deck is going to be focused around that kind of stuff because I know when I'm going to my locals every week, twice a week, I'm going to see a lot of back row decks. Now, if your locals has a lot of combo decks, you have to make sure that your side deck can deal with that. So I just want to say that just before we get into the video, I am going to be showing you guys a wide variety that you guys can play in a lot of different decks and a lot of different situations. But I do want to say that when you're building your side deck, don't just look at every card that I'm going to show you guys today and be like, okay, I have to play all of these. That's not necessarily true. Play the ones that fit your deck the best, that fit your locals the best. And on top of that, play the ones where you know, and this is very important by the way, play the ones where you know you can side them in without hurting your deck by siding out. What I mean by that is you don't ever want to be taking out your engine pieces to be putting in your side deck cards. So for that reason, you have to be making sure that when you're siding the cards in, those cards are the most optimal to side in. And then you siding out doesn't necessarily hurt your strategy, okay? Because you never want to hurt your strategy just to hurt your opponent's strategy, if that makes sense. So you want to always optimize that. So with that being said, I know I took like a couple minutes of your time, but I do want to emphasize that because that's very important if you want to be competitively successful in today's format or just in Yu-Gi-Oh in general, to be honest. So first side deck card that I'm going to bring up here, we all know that Skill Drain just came off the ban list and that's really important because you know why? Yes, I think Eldritch is going to be one of the best decks in today's format. Eldritch specifically is going to be one of the best decks, but with Skill Drain at 3, there's going to be a lot of trap decks very relevant that can still play Skill Drain and still annoy the heck out of you. So you are definitely going to be wanting to play back row removal in your side deck. Now, I think one of the best back removal cards in today's format is Cosmic Cyclone. Now, specifically, Cosmic Cyclone is really important because Scythe is still around. So especially if you are playing a deck that relies on your extra deck, a lot of the time, not just against decks like Eldlich and Trap decks with Skill Drain, you also have to keep in mind that a lot of the PK decks and some other decks as well, some other variants, are going to be playing Dagda and Scythe. Cyclone is really important because if, let's say, your opponent has a Scythe set and you know they're going to DPE pop their Scythe, or they're just going to pop their Scythe somehow so they get the Scythe effect off, you can chain Cosmic Cyclone banish that scythe and you won't have to deal with it so cyclone is very very important and i think cyclone is one of the best back row removal cards in today's format but you guys have to keep in mind there's a lot more and i'm just gonna like all of them are relevant to be honest and this is the thing that i do want to mention as well it also kind of depends on what deck you are playing and what cards can fit your deck the best that's what i was kind of mentioning earlier when i was talking about being the most optimal so you can play things like twin twister twin twister is very relevant as well keep in mind with cosmic cyclone as well just because of the eldritch matchup banishing their eldritch trap cards is actually very very relevant as well because just using a twin twister or a harpy's feather duster or a lightning storm it'll get it in the graveyard but keep in mind all those eldritch traps can replenish themselves right so i'm not saying that the twin twisters is bad against those decks but what i am saying is that there's situations where cyclone is just better but yeah you can play cyclone you can play twin twister you guys if you have a little bit more of a higher budget you guys can play lightning storm over here lightning storm and then you guys could play harpy's feather duster like you know just any back row removal really is very important to be playing in your side deck speaking of control decks imperial order is now officially 
banned, right? And because Imperial Order is banned, I've been seeing a lot of Sky Striker popping up and doing some things, especially because they still have a lot of consistency and that deck is really, really powerful. And now they don't just lose to an Imperial Order anymore. So a card that I think is really important, first of all, backward removal itself is really important and really good against Sky Striker. However, a card that I think is really important in today's format is Anti-Spell Fragrance. Now you guys might be thinking like, yo, Spanko, why would you play Anti-Spell just for the Sky Striker deck? Well, it's not just for the Sky Striker deck and that's the best part about it. Now you guys have to keep in mind that Brave PK or Adventure PK, I think is what they call in the TCG. Adventure PK is very, very relevant and probably will be the best deck in today's format. And what does that deck need the most? It needs its spell cards. It needs its right of Art Ar Artemisia. I forget the name, but the right, you need the journey. You need the whole deck relies or the whole engine essentially relies on a spell card putting the token out for you. So because of that, if you just flip an anti-spell going first, they're going to have a very difficult time putting up that brave engine and they're going to have a hard time putting up the negate. And to be honest with you, more than anything, if they open their brave engine in their hand, that's just going to brick their hands. We already talked about Sky Striker. We now talked about Adventure PK. We have to keep in mind that Sword Soul essentially escaped this ban list like free like they didn't get hit on the ban list sure they got hit the protos but the protos doesn't make the deck really the deck is still very powerful and can put up multiple negates with really just one card right and so when you hit up anti-spell you might as well be thinking why is anti-spell good against something like sword soul now i'm not saying it's the best against sword soul but i do want to bring you guys cards that are very very flexible against a lot of matchups and the reason this card is really good against sword soul is because they do have a few power spell cards that get them into their sword soul monsters themselves because sometimes they'll open the tenies and the spells right Right? And if they can't get to their spell cards or they can't use their spell cards to get into their Soul Sword monsters, then they do kind of have a hard time. Now, speaking of Sword Soul, speaking of Adventure or Brave, whatever you guys want to call it, those decks are really token reliant. Also, Scapegoat came back to two in today's format. So, why is that important? That's because we can play token collector now token collector was always a good card but it was only really just good against the sword soul matchup now there's multiple decks this card is good against now it obviously hits the sword soul matchup but it hits the brave matchup because if they get rid of their token they can't summon their griffin they can't get their equip spell etc etc you know what i mean so if they don't have their token they have a very hard time and then also scapegoat like i said is at two which makes other decks like trickstar if you guys haven't seen my trickstar video you guys can check it out but stuff like trickstar loves to play cards like scapegoat so being able to side this in is is really really powerful so now you can side this in against the brave engine you can side this in against sword soul you can side this in against any deck that plays scapegoat this card is really really important and i think it's going to be very relevant in today's format now back to what i was saying about sword soul and brave and all and eldlich and all those decks right there's one card that's very very powerful and actually i'm going to give you guys a quick interaction on why it's so powerful so the card that i'm talking about here is evenly matched okay so evenly matched is really really important in today's format think about it it hits every single deck now if eldlich sets five and you go evenly match you're getting rid of pretty much four of those cards right so against back row decks this card is insanely insanely powerful now what we might might be thinking about combo decks okay so think about brave right think about the pk brave deck that deck will put up their brave token and they'll put up like a dpe and a dagda let's just say right okay so they really have no negates outside of that one griffin okay so if you have any way to bait out that griffin negate here's why evenly match is broken because when you activate evenly match against the adventure deck and they have the token Tokens cannot be banished. This is a mechanic, by the way, a game mechanic that you should know. Tokens cannot be banished face down. So when you activate Evenly Mash, essentially what you're doing is you're saying everything on your field goes, but you have to keep the token. So they must keep that in mind, okay? So don't get cheated. They have to keep the token. They can't choose to banish the token and keep, you know, another card. They have to keep the token. And that's super, super, super important because if you evenly match them, you pretty much get rid of all their resources. You get rid of everything they have and they're literally left with nothing. So that's why evenly matched is so, so important against the adventure archetype. But it's also really good against, like I said, the back row against the Sky Striker matchup. That's really, really relevant as well. So keep that in mind. Evenly matched is insanely broken against so many decks in today's format. And I think you need to be playing this card in your side deck if especially if you can you definitely need to now one card that i think is really underrated in today's format and i was thinking about it and i was like wait this card is unironically good in today's format and that is ghost ogre okay 
So Ghost Ogre is really good in today's format because if you guys don't know what this card does, essentially when a monster or a spell that's already on the field activates its effect, you can activate the Ghost Ogre to destroy that card. Now most of the time, if it's a monster, the effect will still resolve, but you are getting rid of that monster. However, what's really important about a Ghost Ogre is because if you think about the adventure deck, like I said earlier, or even if you think about something like Sword Soul, right? The Sword Soul, like Moye or whatever, will activate its effect. You can Ghost Ogre. Sure, they'll get the token, but they can't do anything with that token. They'll really just pass, especially if you get rid of their normal summon but why ghost ogre is really good against the adventure archetype is because when they use the right of our, our I, I feel like i'm saying this name wrong right of artemisia whatever when they use that card it's a continuous spell right so they're going to activate it they're going to use the effect on field by the way so it's not on activation it's, it's a card that's already on the field and then activating its effect okay once they do that to activate their journey then what you can do is you can ghost ogre and now because it's a continuous spell the effect won't resolve so essentially as soon as they activate that and you use Ghost Ogre, you break their whole Brave Engine. Their Brave Engine is broken at that point, they can't just keep recycling, and they have to essentially draw into another right to Martemisia later on in the game. Or, they would have to make a Levy to search the Water Enchant, or to add back the Water Enchantress that's banished, and then on their next turn try it again, essentially, right? But what that does is it really hinders their combo, and if you happen to open other hand traps or other disruptions, essentially they won't have the free griffin. Now against rogue decks, this is a little bit less in the competitive scene, but against rogue decks especially, a lot of them that use uh, at field spells, the field spells will have to activate. So we're talking about adding this to, we're talking about prank kids, which are decks that you can still see, right? Now those field spells don't activate on activation, if that makes sense. They activate their effect separately. So because of that, you can also Ghost Ogre a lot of those field spells and it puts a lot of those decks in really weird situations. So I think Ghost Ogre low key is pretty good in today's format. Now, if you think about it too, Ghost Ogre is really good against PK because even if they don't go into their Brave Engine, like I said, if you Ghost Ogre the Chiribini, they're going to have a really weird time playing through it because they lose a Link 2 to go into Bardish, but on top of that, they lose a card that they can summon a BA back to that will protect their BA monster, if that makes sense. So if you guys know how the deck works, essentially the BA monsters need to be summoned to uh, arrow Chiribini points to or else they'll be destroyed. So if you just Ghost Ogre the Chiribini, they have a really weird time playing around that. So it makes their boards really, really awkward. So a lot of versatility with this card. I think this card is really underrated in today's format. Now, one thing I want to mention just before we end off the video here is that these cards that I've showed you, essentially, they hit everything in the meta in the competitive scene, but they're also really good against a lot of rogue decks as well. That's why I think these are the best side deck cards that you must include in your side deck in some way, shape, or form in today's format. But I will say there's a lot of other cards that are very good and very relevant as well. If you think about stuff like Alpha, if you think about stuff like Red Reboot, if you think about stuff like Pancratops, those are always, always generically good in everyone's side deck. So don't think that I'm showing you guys these cards that I'm just saying, these are the only cards you need to be playing in your side deck. No, that's not true. Obviously, stuff like Nibiru, obviously other things specifically are very generic cards are very good. But these ones, all I'm saying is in today's format specifically, you need to be playing these in some way, shape or form. Again, you're hitting every single deck, every single archetype, every single rogue competitive thing in today's format with these cards. If you think about Token Collector, Token Collectors hits two of the best decks, which is Sword Soul and Adventure. If you think about Ogre, Ogre, like I mentioned, hits most of the rogue decks. It also hits Adventure and Sword Soul. If you think about Evenly Mashed, hits Back Row, hits Adventure, hits Sword Soul, hits any meta deck, hits Eldritch as well, hits Back Row deck. So that's very important. You have your Anti-Spell as well, which is hits the adventure if i say adventure or brave by the way guys keep in mind that i'm saying it's the same archetype brave adventure same thing so you can hit the adventure you can hit the sky striker which can be very prevalent in today's format as well that's really important then your backward removal of course is really good against just all the backward decks that are going to be playing skill drain really stuff like eldritch but also keep in mind like i said earlier cosmic cyclone is very good against stuff like scythe so really you're hitting everything that you will see in today's format with these cards even if you think about actually one thing that i didn't mention was invoked right invoked essentially got through this ban list for free. Same with Dogmatica, really, because Dogmatica, sure, Nadir's went to two, but the rest of the deck is still very, very powerful. And that deck really relies on its spell cards. So anti-spell is really, really good for that as well. So you guys can see that there's just a ton of decks that these cards are really, really good into. And that's the best part about putting these cards in your side deck is that you're not just siding in specifically for one deck, you're siding in for every deck, really, right? When you think about siding in something like Token Collector, you're siding in for multiple decks. You're not using side deck slots for just one singular deck. 
decks. Same thing with all of these, right? Anti-spell hits a multitude of decks. Your back removal hits a multitude of decks. And that's really, really important. So yeah, these are some of the best side deck cards that I think you should be playing in today's format. By the way, just before we end the video, there's one more card that I wanted to mention that I completely forgot to mention, and that is Artifact Lancia. Quickly, the reason why I want to say Lancia is really good in today's format is because if you think about, again, the Adventure PK archetype, PK all need to banish themselves to get their effects off, really. If you think about Eldritch, all the trap cards need to banish themselves to replenish themselves. If you think about stuff like Sword Soul, you need to banish in that deck as well. So Lancia hits a wide variety of decks as well. So I completely forgot to mention Lancia. I knew I wanted to mention it, so I wanted to bring it to you guys here at the end of the video just before we really ended the video off. But yeah, Lancia is very important. I think you definitely should be playing it in today's format, especially if you can put this in your side deck. And if you think about all the other rogue matchups as well, stuff like ABC Banishes, stuff like Invoked Banishes, stuff like Shadal, stuff like just so many other decks will banish cards and Lancia is really good. Dino as well. So yeah, so Lancia is an insane card. Definitely put it in your side deck if you guys can. I think this card is really good in today's format. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys took something out of today's video, even if it wasn't the side deck cards themselves. Just trying to understand of how to side cards, where to side cards, and how your deck really functions, how your locals functions, etc, etc. It's very important. Keep in mind that with your side deck, you play 67% of the games in Yu-Gi-Oh with a side deck. So this is really, really important to get right, and it's really, really important for a competitive success. But if you guys have any suggestions or any other ideas for good side deck cards in today's format, let me know in the comment section down below. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.